Israel's ambassador, meanwhile, to the United Nations says his country will no longer issue visas to UN personnel following criticism of Israel's conduct of war by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Guterres drew a furious response from Israel after stating that Hamas terror attacks didn't happen in a vacuum. The UN chief has defended his remarks, saying they were taken out of context. I am shocked by the misrepresentations by some of my statement yesterday in the Security Council, as if, as if I was justifying acts of terror by Hamas. This is false. It was the opposite. In the beginning of my intervention yesterday, I clearly stated, and I quote, I have condemned unequivocally the horrifying and unprecedented 7 October acts of terror by Hamas in Israel. Nothing can justify the deliberate killing, injuring, and kidnapping of civilians or the launching of rockets against civilian targets. End quote. Indeed, I spoke of the grievances of the Palestinian people. And in doing so, I also clearly stated, and I quote, but the grievances of the Palestinian people cannot justify the appalling attacks by Hamas. End quote. And then I went on with my intervention referring all my positions on all aspects of the Middle East crisis. I believe it was necessary to set the record straight, especially out of respect to the victims and to their families. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Sergei Vasiliev. He's an associate professor of international criminal law at the University of Amsterdam. Welcome to you. This week, the UN Secretary General expressed concern about what he called clear violations of international humanitarian law in Gaza. Before we assess this statement, what exactly are the rules of international humanitarian law? Uh, good afternoon. Um, the rules of international humanitarian law uh, set limitations on how the belligerent parties may have recourse to, uh, to warfare. It sets certain limits on, on the means and methods of warfare in which um, uh, the militants can uh, engage. For example, uh, the principle of uh, distinction um, uh, obligates the warring parties to distinguish between civilian and uh, military uh, objectives and do not to make the uh, civilian uh, objects and civilian population the objects uh, of attack. The principle of proportionality demands that uh, the warring parties uh, refrain from launching attacks um, um, which may result in um, a disproportionate incidental uh, damage to the civilian uh, population and to civilian infrastructure. So with that in mind, is the UN Secretary General right? Are these rules being violated in Gaza and by whom? Uh, it is uh, highly likely that the rules of international humanitarian law are being uh, violated uh, in, in Gaza. However, uh, before rushing to conclusions, it is of utmost importance that uh, the facts are uh, established in a credible uh, and impartial uh, manner by the respective international um, fact-finding bodies. We may restate uh, the rules uh, that apply to the uh, armed, uh, to the conduct of armed conflict, but the factual determinations that need to be made should be left to um, independent and impartial investigators, and if need be, to prosecutors and judges. How then can you realistically enforce these rules on a battlefield? You talk or allude to the fog of war, uh, and what options are there to punish those who violate it? in this circumstance? Uh, the, the primary responsibility for uh, enforcing rules of international humanitarian law, ensuring compliance with international humanitarian law, lies of course with uh, warring parties uh, themselves, in this case with uh, Hamas uh, uh, and with uh, Israel. However, if the international humanitarian uh, law rules are violated, um, there may be a possibility and there needs to be um, individual accountability for those who engage in such behavior. And in this uh, case, the International Criminal Court 
is exercising uh, jurisdiction uh, over uh, the situation in, in Palestine. Uh, so there is a possibility that uh, in the future cases would be uh, brought against those individuals who have allegedly engaged in the commission of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, Israel is not a signatory to the ICC. Obviously, neither is Hamas. So in reality, would violations like these go unpunished? Um, indeed, Hamas is not uh, a party uh, to the uh, International uh, Criminal Court, nor uh, is Israel. However, the state uh, of uh, Palestine has acceded uh, to the ICC statute, and um, in decision from 2021, the ICC pretrial chamber has confirmed that the court has jurisdiction over um, the conduct which may amount to international crimes mm -hmm. committed uh, in, in the territory of uh, the state of Palestine, namely uh, the, the Gaza Strip, as well as the uh, West Bank, including uh, East Jerusalem. So it does not uh, matter that Israel uh, is not a state party to the ICC, because any crimes that it may have committed in, in the Gaza Strip still fall within the jurisdiction of, of the ICC. And in the same manner, uh, the crimes that may have been committed by uh, the, uh, the Hamas uh, fighters uh, in the territory of Israel, they would also be covered by the ICC jurisdiction. Sergei Vasiliev, Associate Professor of the International Criminal Law at University of Amsterdam. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's uh, look at this now with uh, Stefan Talman, who's an expert on international law and joins us from Bonn. Uh, welcome to DW. Um, the UN Secretary General uh, this week said there had been clear violations of international humanitarian law in Gaza. Uh, we'll assess his statement uh, in just a moment. First, though, for the layman, what are the, the rules of international humanitarian law? The rules of international humanitarian law are laid down in the Geneva Conventions and the protocols thereto, and uh, international customary law. Uh, the rules of international humanitarian law govern the means and methods of warfare. So what you can do lawfully in a war. Right. And, and is the UN uh, Secretary General right, do you think? Are, are these rules being violated uh, in Gaza? And if so, by whom? The UN Secretary General, in my view, is correct in stating that the uh, laws of international humanitarian law are violated. The violation of these rules started with the attack by Hamas on Israel on the 7th of October, which was a clear violation of international humanitarian law. But the law is also violated by Israel in its response to that attack. Uh, for example, Israel has declared a complete siege of the Gaza Strip, denying the civilian population there essential necessities such as food and water or fuel and electricity. Uh, and this is in violation of the Geneva Conventions and the general rules of international humanitarian law, right. which so amongst when, others prohibit... Forgive me for interrupting, sir, but when um, Israel uh, uh, retorts to that, that this is essential in order for us to root out Hamas because Hamas are amongst the, the, the Gaza population. You, clearly, you don't see that as a, as a, a useful defence. No, Israel has the right to self-defense, but this right to self-defense has to be exercised within the framework of international humanitarian law. And international humanitarian law prohibits collective punishment. What Israel is doing at the moment by imposing a complete siege on the Gaza Strip is, in effect, collective punishment of 2.3 million uh, Palestinian civilians living there. Israel, not a signatory to the International uh, Criminal Court, obviously neither is uh, Hamas. Um, do we therefore presume that any violations in this conflict are likely to go unpunished? Not necessarily. I assume that if Hamas fighters would be uh, captured by uh, Israel, they would be put on trial in Israel. But uh, the Palestinian National Authority in the West Bank 
has uh, ratified the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, which means that the uh, International Criminal Court has jurisdiction over the Palestinian occupied territories and could investigate any violations of international humanitarian law, both by Israel and by Hamas fighters. Because it is the place where the alleged violations happen that fall under the, the, the aegis of this law rather than the signatories. That's correct. It depends either on where the crime has been committed or what nationality the perpetrator of the crime has. So uh, comparing the conflict in Gaza with that in Ukraine, uh, King Abdullah of Jordan has accused the West of double standards. Does he have a point? I think he does, because, of course, the, the West is conspicuously silent on any violations of international humanitarian law currently going on in Gaza. Uh, the West seems to emphasize mainly Israel's right to self-defense, which unquestionably exists, but it does not point to any violations of international humanitarian law, for example, by Israel. The West calls for humanitarian access but it does not state what the reason is that humanitarian aid cannot get through, namely the uh, siege imposed by Israel, which, as I said before, is a violation of international law. That's very clear. Thank you for talking us uh, through that. Uh, Stefan Talbot, thank you so much. Thank you.